the Lord is here. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, say. Mighty prayers 
and many prayers have gone up for your daughter. Nobody but the Lord have spared your life. It's just a miracle of what God can do. So glad to hear your voice the other day when your mother called me and allowed you to talk with me. That, that's a miracle within itself. Then Jada, through Jada, I talk with you. We're going to continue to pray for you. Also, Sister Audrey Smith. And others whose names are on this prayer list. God is a miracle worker. He works in mysterious ways. That was on my heart to talk with you all because the Lord he don't forget the kindness and the goodness of your parents and what you have done in his sanctuary God is good preachers and teachers are carrying the word today. Some are twisting it and turning it in so many different ways. They're talking about the way to heaven. Children, there's only one. If you want to see the Father, you got to go through by the Son. Right now is God, 
the Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We come, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Oh, yes, oh, yeah. Praying God. for your tender mercy yes, and your healing yes, power. All right, all right. For we need you. We needed you when we got up this morning. We needed you at the noon day out. We need you right now. We want to stop and thank you for all of your goodness and your kindness. Thank you for your mercy. Oh Lord, please to have mercy upon fill us tonight you, you, you know where the pain goes and comes you a doctor among all doctors you said whatsoever we ask in your name you would do it we pray Father God in the name of Jesus Please, sir, have mercy. Look upon Sister Audrey tonight. You have the power to regulate that body. Master, we call on you for the names that are on this prayer list. You know their condition. Now, Lord, look upon those who are in prison, incarcerated. Thank you for Sister Denise this yes, night. Yes, and when this life journey comes to an end, we too like others must quit this walk of life. We too like others must stick our swords in the sand of time to study war no more. Over yonder where every day will be Sunday. Sabbath will have no end. They all said amen. Oh, by and by. Yeah. 
the mighty good leader. All right, specials. We'll come now with our first selection, followed by Deacon Smith. And before we have the specials to come, Deacon Smith, I will go give you, I'm going to give you a minute here to speak about Mother Smith. All right. Amen. 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 Isn't this wonderful? Some people, you know, some people will start, ooh, isn't that something? Ooh. Oh, but let me tell you, I preached about affliction this morning. Yeah. 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 Oh, God took us through. Yeah. God is guiding us, telling the testimony right. that he's the doctor. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah he kept us. Right. Back in my former church in St. Louis, Missouri, they lost from 20, uh, March 20 uh, of last year, 20, March of 20, 20, they lost 28 members, 18 by COVID. That's just one church. Not talking about the many churches across us. Yes. Yes. God have blessed us. Yes. Yes. It was talking about the seniors. It, it, take out seniors. But here we are. Yes. Right. I know I'm a senior here. Yes. There's others here, but God yes. brought us through. Yes. I'm going to let Deacon Smith talk about yes. Mother Smith. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Warrior. That's been on the firing line for a long time. Yeah, yeah back in, at uh, Greater St. John Missionary Baptist Church. Yeah, yeah. yeah she was the directress, directress of the um, vacation, Bible. vacation Bible School yeah. for all her life, practically, yeah. church life. Mm -hmm. There in, here in Forma, mm -hmm. yes, and her daughter, uh, and Sister Edwina uh, superseded her. Yes. Yet, Mother Smith is still in the land of the living. Yes. All right. Yes. Deacon Smith. In obedience, God, and grateful to our God and to our pastor and all that is present here, I'm just so grateful to God for his many blessings. Mm -hmm. Yes. yes. Our pastor preached this morning uh, from Psalm 119, verse 7 to 1. Uh, where David said he was glad that yeah. he was afflicted. Yeah. Yeah. And we were asking the question, why would you be glad yeah. something hurt you? Right. Why would that be, why would you be glad that you're going through something? Yeah. But anything that leads you closer to God yeah. Yeah. is truly a blessing. Yeah. My wife, Sharon, uh, contracted that virus. She had some other conditions, but she contracted that virus as well. Went in the hospital, and she's been in there for a number of months now. Mm -hmm. yes. But today, yeah. but today, right. yes, on yeah. the other side of uh, on the other right. side of the corona bar. Right. Today, yeah. uh, they said we're gonna bring uh, Mother Smith or Sister Smith home at uh, two o'clock. Mm. Mm -hmm. uh, and we waited, mm -hmm. she didn't come. We waited, she didn't come. But at 4.30, wow. yes. see you can't rush God. Wow. God know what he's doing. Yeah. Four thirty the bell, doorbell rang. It said, we are bringing in my, uh, uh, Sharon Smith. Wow. This is the I said, sure, bring her in. Yeah. So they brought her in. We were talking we called her Nana, because that's what she uh, exactly called her. So we called her, Nana, 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 well, you're here, Nana. She said, she just sort of smiled a little, but she wouldn't say nothing. Until he walked in. Mm. I was like, <laughs> so I said, now, now wait. I've been married to you 58 years and you said nothing to me. But I'm just what I'm saying. God is a good God. You know, I understand she had some unwise conditions before she went in the hospital. But God kept her. God kept her all of this time. Yes, sir. I asked him, I said, where is the oxygen? Uh, they said she don't need. Yeah. I said, now that's God. Yeah. I didn't want to argue with him all over the world that's not God. She don't need it. And I'm just here to tell you, God is a good God. Yeah. No, I don't just serve him because, but because he is God all by his. I'm here to tell you now, he is a doctor. Yeah. You know, I've read about it and I've heard him. But I know for myself, he is a doctor. He will teach you and he will keep you in touch with you. He will keep your mind if your mind is on him. Pray for her. Thank praying you. for my yes. daughter. And all that. I just pray for God. As I 
I said this morning, thank God that we have a pastor yeah. who God has chosen yeah. and anointed his power and power in his prayer. He's there for us. And as I said, she's at home. She's at home, and, and I said to her, now I'm going to church now. We're getting ready to go to church, Sharon. I said, you want to go? Mm -hmm. And I said, we, we're going to work on it, honey. We're going to work on it. Yeah. But I'm grateful to God she had that mind. That's right. Still want to come. Give God the best. So I'm saying to God, while we're here, we ought to lift him up. Yeah. We ought to lift him up. Because we don't know what tomorrow will hold. Right. But oh, God, I'm thinking for the day. God is a good God. Yeah. He's a good God. Hold on. 
O wise, almighty God, the Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, as I stand here in this holy place. Yes, Lord. I pray thee to take me out of self that your name, Lord Jesus, will be glorified. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your holy sight. We pray this prayer. Amen. Amen. Continuing talking about pain. Yeah. Suffering. Yes, Lord. Second Corinthians, the twelfth chapter, verses seven through nine. My late pastor preached this message. The, lot, the Dr. C. J. Anderson preached this message. He was a dynamic man of God, Amen. prophet, Amen. priest, and king. Amen. There's only one Dr. C.J. Anderson, yes. Reverend Dr. C.J. Anderson. There's only one. Second Corinthians 12th chapter verses 7 through 9, the Bible says Paul this great apostle. Mm -hmm. And lest I should be exalted above measure all right, all right. through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, mm -hmm. the messenger of Satan, to buffet me lest I should be exalted above measure. For this thing I besought the Lord three times, thrice, yes. that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, My grace, my grace. is sufficient yes. for you. Yes. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. Yes. Oh, yes. Paul goes on to say, Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. All right. Yes, sir. Yeah, he had something, as we all do, bothering us that we wish God would take. Yes. Yes. But uh, that's to make us grow. Yes. Yes. All right. And strengthen us, to let yes. us know that we are not autonomous. Yes. We can't make this journey by ourselves. Right. Every day we need the Lord. Yes. We need his strength. Yes. I don't care how you cut the mustard, as they all say. You need his strength. Amen. The subject tonight is living with pain. Amen. You may be seated. My late pastor, Reverend Dr. C.J. Anderson, said that he never thought of Christian martyrs without marveling at their captivity to endure pain. Yeah. The pain of the instruments of torture yes. aspired to make an individual renounce his faith. Yes. The pain experienced while Hungry lions devoured one's flesh. The pain resulting from red hot iron scorching the body with horrible whips and the pain of treachery by friends and loved ones. Oh, what tremendous faith to willingly and joyfully endure such agonizing pain, yes, yes. all for the sake of Christ. Uh -huh. yes. all right. But if suffering a painful death must have been awful, then living in pain from day to day constantly 
continuously, in endlessly is sheer hopeless torture. Yes. The fact of pain is well nigh a universal experience. Right. Yes. Although the pain of one person is not necessarily the pain of another. Right. Right. Yes. For some, it is physical mm -hmm. pain. Uh, the crippling pain of arthritis or neuritis, uh, neuritis, which is an inflammatory inflammation of degenerative lesion or injury of a nerve, marked especially by pain. The paralyzing agony of a headache or the un ceasing misery of a gradually wasting disease. Mm, yeah. For others, it is emotional pain. Yeah. Yeah. The sickness of unrequested love, loving another to the fullest without being loved in return. Right. That's constant pain. Yeah. The hopelessness and despair of residing with a mate day after day, month after month, year after year, right. for whom you have nothing but scorn yes. and contempt mm -hmm. and resentment and the grief expressed by separation and or death of a loved one, it is painful yeah to be somewhere where you have to be. All you right. hate to be. Exactly. Yeah, it is somewhere where you hate to be. Mm -hmm. For still others, there is psychological pain, yes. such as oppression and depression, yes. fear, yes. loneliness, and even demonic attacks. All right. yes. Pain. Yes. Right. yes, the mind beset by formless but very real fears. Yes. Like you go into a room and you see things that, are, yes. you know, right. the yeah. mind shows you something yeah. that's really not there. Mm -hmm. Yes, the fear. The nerves screaming from excruciating pressures of life. And, right. and the brain tortured by imaginary Imagery's ghost of yes. doom. Right. Bladder, Blackner in explaining about demonic forces yes. in Hegeter's book entitled Being and Time wrote, if, quote, the demon can manipulate our experiences, yes. however, then it can create within uh, us a total set of experiences that pass all of our internal tests for truth, all right. but which are none the less they're false. Yes. Anytime the devil set up wor uh, worship and workshop in your mind, yes. body and heart, he brings pain, pain, and pain. Right. Yes. Jesus called him a thief yes. who comes to steal, yes. kill, and destroy. Right. This is pain, pain, and pain. Yes. There is also the pain of memory, agonizing memory, the misery in remembering an event which one would desperately like to forget. Mm -hmm. right. But the memory refuses to fade from the mind. Yes. Right. The haunting memory of a loved one you fail to get or give forgiveness from yes. or to before they die. Yes. Knowing that you did not want unwanted separation yes. like this. Right. This is mental pain. Yes. Listen to this very moving statement of Harry Dolan, 
chairman of the Watts Writers Council and manager of the federal Frederick Douglass House. You remember we went there. He says, quote, oh, remember my mother. Curiously, though, I never remember her dancing, running, playing, always lying down. The smell of disinfect, strong disinfect, the deep, continuous coughing, the brown paper bag filled with toilet, paper red with bubbly spit and blood, lying half concealed under the bed. Returning from the store one day at the age of nine, he saw a black police ambulance before his door. He says, I forced myself toward the police wagon as the men opened the doors and slid the st uh, stretcher along the bare metal. I saw my mother's head bounce on the floor. Wait, I moaned, don't hurt her. Then I was running, screaming, please don't hurt her. I looked down at her pain-filled face. What's wrong, mama? I asked softly. You really, really sick now? She nodded, your father will be home soon. Mm -hmm. Tell him I'm at the general hospital. All right. Tell him to hurry. Yeah, yeah. I'll tell him to hurry, mama. Yeah. I promise I'll tell him to hurry. Yeah. She nodded sadly and puckered her lips as she always did since we're, we weren't allowed to kiss her. That was the last time I saw my mother, All right. except at the grave. My father came to the funeral with two white men who stood on each side of him all the time. There were people crying all around us. My grandmother kept squeezing me and moaning. I, I, I saw my father try to cover his face, but one of the men said something and he stood up stiffly after that. I am sure that Mr. Dolan is uncomfortable with that horrible memory haunting him, yet there is no way short of insanity he could ever forget those tragic memories and definitely stamped in his mind. Oh, the pain, the pain, the pain of pain that will not go away. The victim responds in varied and sundry ways to pain. Many persons uh, anesthetize uh, themselves with strong and powerful drugs. Some persons drink themselves into a stupor. Others are found laughing to keep from crying. This explains the stereotype types of happy quote go lucky Negroes, black people who whom the world of other ethnic groups deem wary free. All right. But of course, the laughter is a front to disguise the pain that's felt inside. Dunbar describes it in this manner. Quote, we wear the mask that grins and lies. It hides our cheeks and shades our eyes. This debt we pay to human guide. Yeah. With torn and bleeding hearts, we smile. 
and mouth with married subtleties, subtleties. Why should the world be otherwise in counting all our tears and sighs? Nay, let them only see us while we wear the mask. We smile, but oh, great Christ, our hearts to thee from tortured souls arise. We sing, but oh, the clay is vile beneath our feet and long the mile, but let the world dream otherwise. We wear the mask. Yes, we do. Well, our mask, that cultural mask of our uh, of ours show us well enough to fool the observer, but beneath that mask is still the pain, which is synonymous with being black in a society which despises our differences. Oh, the pain, and the pain will not go away. So on both the individual and the collective level, there is the problem of living with pain. Yes. How to endure it and how to come uh, to cope with it. Yes. The experience of Apostle Paul will serve to help us in the vein. He tells us that he was afflicted yes. by an undefined thorn yes. in the flesh. Right. The nature of that thorn is not made clear right. and has been the subject of much speculating. Right. speculation. Some have uh, offered the opinion that Paul referred to a chronic problem involving one of his legs. Since it is known that he suffered painful reoccurrences which made walking extremely difficult and resulted in his constant limping. Other uh, commentators uh, speculate that the apostle Thorn was optimic. Uh, his eye inflammation of the eyeball because it is also known that a severe eye problem haunted Paul throughout his career. It could have been a problem of uh, homosexuality. We don't know. But whatever the thorn or the nature it was, it was Paul, it was in Paul's flesh. It was obviously a continuous, endless, and unceasing affliction mm -hmm. described by him as the messenger of Satan. Right, right. Buffet him. Yes. yes. Anytime you have something that is not of God, right. is of the devil. Right. Any sensitive uh, soul reading the apostle's experience cannot help but sympathize with the agony of that uncertain thorn, yes. knowing through the biblical record the strong faith and the immense capacity for discomfort and pain possessed by Paul, yes. we can be almost certain that the apostle ordained was one of uh, immeasurable proportion proportions in proportions mm -hmm. yes he was strong yes we know that Paul was far from being weak as far as inner strength is concerned his physical frame was unimpressive according to his account but his inner core was as hard as steel yet his strong giant faith of fortitude endured such pain yes. that was forced to pray uh, repeatedly to, for relief. Right. Yes. yes, he was forced to pray. Yes, he was. Yes, he, was. Yes. he was strong, but yet, yes. whatever it was, it yes. made him pray. Right. Yes. 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 
specifically we are informed that on three occasions his he prayed for removal of that painful thorn. The Lord's answer to Paul was my grace is sufficient for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Yes, the Lord declined to remove that thorn, but at the same time provided for Paul even as he provides for us uh, bearability. He enabled the apostle the ability to bear his pain. The pain therefore becoming a vehicle for God in Christ to be exalted through the witness of his followers who shared the agony of Calvary with Christ in order that uh, he may uh, in the end partake of his glory. Are you listening? A more telling point is that trouble, agony, and pain not only unites us with our Savior in his suffering, but aligns us with the sorrows of fellow sufferers. Uh Yes, General Kennedy is right as he says, when there comes to when there comes to the Christian defeat, to a defeat in life, it creates an understanding of how many men have had the same experience and even worse ones. When a man is sad, as a Christian ought to be sad, he enters into a new and more vital relationship with all mankind. Christian sorrow broadens the vision of men for it builds within them a new uh, sympathy. This is what Jesus meant in the Beatitudes. Blessed are they that mourn for they shall be comforted. He is not merely putting a premium on on mourning uh, and on mourning he is saying that the man, the man who can mourn and who is able to know sorrow is to be uh, thought of as a blessed man because he, that's right, that's right. Sh- uh, he shall find comfort in his sympathy for his yeah. brethren. Yeah. He is saying that uh, sharing is more satisfying yeah. than merely uh, deferred or defending and it is this exhilaration which only the humble know. I just want to say as I close this message, uh, as I preach this morning about pain and uh, affliction, as in this message tonight, we can go uh, uh, through things, but uh, we can understand when others, when they're going through, we can sympathize with them. The Bible says that in all things Christ, he went through things that he may can help us. He suffered all things. Nothing that he went, uh, that we go through that he didn't uh, go through, but yet he wasn't tempted to, he wasn't, uh, he didn't fall for it. I just want to close with this by saying that children, uh, Uh, the old folks used to say, I thank God for my troubles. I thank God for me going through certain things. Because when you go through, you can understand how others feel. You can feel the pain of others. Somebody who has never gone through hunger will never know how a hungry man feels. Somebody who has never gone through an operation will never know how a patient feels in recovery. You see, God has us on a mission, Great St. John. We went through that COVID. Yes, we did. And we suffered. We suffered in many different ways. Some of us had different experiences, but it's still the COVID. We went through so that we can tell others 
that God is a doctor. Yeah, we can sympathize with those who have gone through and is going through right now. That's why we pray for them because we have gone through ourselves. Yes, I understand how when you can have a condition for over many two or three years. I had a condition. I told you that this morning. So I can understand when you have a condition, but I can sympathize with you. I can understand when your heart is hurt because I've had a hurt heart. Not just one time, but on many occasions. I know how it feels to be lonely, but let's go back to Jesus. He says he was lonely. He knows how we feel when we're lonely. He knows when uh, loneliness uh, engulfs us and we feel sad. That's why he said he'll never leave you nor forsake you because he's been lonely. Yes, his disciples left him in the garden. And then he prayed that uh, uh, prayer for each one of us. Yes, read your Bible. When he prayed, he said, yet yeah, uh, I'm not alone. Because when God is with you, he's more than the world for you. Yeah, he's gone through problems that we are praying now. And that's why he can help us. When we pray earnestly in the name of Jesus, God will deliver us because Jesus has already gone through it. He understands our case. He's the advocate. You know what the advocate is? He's an attorney sitting on the right hand of the Father pleading our case because he's already experienced what we've gone through. Yeah, he knows when our hearts are hurt because his heart has been hurt. Oh, don't you remember when he cried over Jerusalem because they wouldn't accept him. Even his own family refused to accept him. Don't you remember when he got uh, those thorns on his head? He knows physical pain. Don't you know he knows our pain? Yes, he knows pain. Yeah, we haven't experienced pain like Jesus, but he has experienced pain. That when we are paining, he understands. Oh, he comes to our rescue. Yes, he does. He has he he understands our mental pain. Yes, he does. He's gone through our mental mental pain. Just as we're going through. That's why he's a mind regulator. And he's a heart fixer. Do you know him? Stand on your feet and give him the glory. Stand on your feet and give him a hand clap. Because he's the one who has been our friend. He's the one who will give you uh, relief. And he's the one who will heal you. Yes, he will. He's the one who knows how you feel. He's the one, he's the one who knows oppression and depression. Well, we just talking about he was wounded. Yes, he was. He was wounded. He was beaten. He knows pain. But then he knows our pain. He knows our mind. Yeah. Where he can regulate it. He'll never leave you up. Nor forsake you. Even when you go through your pain. Go with a praising God. Because you know he's going to be with you. And if you don't uh, take it away, he'll walk with you. He'll give you strength. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burdens of my heart rolled away. Almighty God, as we prepare to leave from this place, but never from your presence, thank you for being with us. Thank you. You said you would never leave us nor forsake us. You don't leave us because we're getting older. 
we're growing closer. Yes. 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 Thank you for your goodness and your kindness. Thank you for your grace. We need your grace. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet communion of your Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide with us until we meet again. Let us all say amen. Amen. And through the cross, and let's receive our tithes and offerings. Amen.